Hello. Now, today, continuing our work in algebra, we're going to be doing a very brief, basic reminder of linear and quadratic patterns. Now, everything we know about these uh, patterns from junior cycle is still true. So there's very little new today. The primary thing is going to be, for the linear patterns anyway, making a more explicit link between the patterns you already know, the linear patterns you already know, or arithmetic patterns you might have called them, and functions or the function for a straight line, the equations for straight lines. That's our main aim today, linking patterns and equations better together. Now, if we take a situation that's very like what we would have done in junior cycle, if we had our first term, where uh, our first term is going to have n is equal to one. If you remember, n was the letter we often used for counting up our terms in patterns instead of x. Uh, and it's what I have across the x-axis down here. So I've labeled it the n-axis, same as x. So when n is 1, our tn, our pattern number, is 1. When n is 2, our pattern number, our y number, is 3. When n is 3, our pattern number is 5. And when n is 4, our pattern number is 7. So that's our pattern, very like what we did in junior cycle. What's the relationship? I'm saying this is a pattern, but what is the relationship between these numbers? It's that if we start at 1, we add 2 to get to 3, we add 2 to get to 5, we add 2 to get to 7. So the difference between each one of our numbers is the same. So we have what we say, if we look at the definition on the bottom right-hand uh, corner down here, for a linear pattern, the first difference is constant. The difference between each one of our terms in our pattern is the same. The first difference, or the difference between each number, is constant or the same number. It's always plus two in this case. So that's basic recap of linear patterns and a reminder of why we call them linear patterns. If we start at n is one, and our pattern is we have tn is one, at n is two, Tn is 3. At n is 3, Tn is 5. Uh, and at n is 4, Tn is 7. So within the uh, accuracy of my sketch, you can see that I end up with a straight line. So this is a linear pattern because it produces a straight line. Now, if I wanted to know an equation for this pattern so that I would know any term in the pattern, I've, I want to know, a, sub in a particular value of n and find out what term that would be if I wanted to know the hundredth pattern or whatever. Uh, I want a formula to find any term in this. I know from junior cycle that I could use this formula here, tn is equal to uh, a plus n minus 1 multiplied by d. This is in your log tables. We will use it when we are doing the linear patterns work in more detail later on. But to link this more explicitly to functions, we're going to look at it a slightly different way. If this is effectively a line, uh, it's not quite a line because the, our points are only defined at our values of n. They're not defined in between. So this is something that is linear but it is not itself a line uh, because it isn't defined uh, through all of our points. Now, through all of our, our um, values along the x-axis. But if I wanted to get the equation of it nonetheless, what I could do is think about what the slope of this linear uh, relationship is. And the slope is always going to be the same thing. It's going to be rise over run. So if I rise and then run across, what am I going to do? I'm going to rise by 2 and run across by 1. So the slope of this pattern, the slope of the pattern would be rise over run, would be equal to plus 2. Now where have we seen plus 2 before? It's the difference, which makes sense. If we're increasing n by 1 each time and we're adding 2 each time, that means that our slope is going to be 2 over 1. We're changing our values of n by 1. We're changing our terms, our y values, by 2. So our slope is going to be 2 over 1. 
So to find the slope effectively of the line that we are producing or the linear pattern that we are producing, uh, we just look for the first difference. So the slope is going to be our first difference. And for reasons that will become obvious later, I'm going to highlight that can also be thought of as a rate of change. How quickly is the pattern changing would be a rate of change. That idea will be important later. So I have my rate of change, my slope, and I figured that out from both the picture and from thinking about how my pattern is increasing. So I know that the formula for Tn is going to follow the same general pattern as the formula for or the equation of a line, mx plus c. y is equal to mx plus c is the general equation of our line. And I know that the slope in this case is going to be 2. And I know that at my x value I'm calling n. So, and I have plus some constant that I don't yet know. Now, what I can do is take one of the terms that I know in my pattern and use it to find the value of c. Now, how would I do that? If I took when n is 1, in this case, the smallest value that n can take, if I take n is 1, I would have tn is 1. So tn is 1 and n is 1. So I'd have 1 is equal to 2 by 1 plus c. So I would end up with 1 is equal to 2 plus c. Rearranging, I end up with c is equal to minus 1. So c is equal to minus 1. So my equation of my line, let's write it over here. The equation of my line is going to be tn is equal to 2n minus 1. If n starts at 1. But usually when we deal with functions, when we deal with equations of lines, we don't think about the line starting at x is 1. We think about it crossing the y-axis, its y-intercept. So what we're going to do is redo this issue, redo this problem, more closely mirroring what we would do when we were thinking about functions starting at x is 0. So again, we have a difference of two each time. This is exactly the same pattern, plus two, plus two, plus two. So our slope is still going to be two. And we want y equals mx plus c is the straight line that we know we're going to get. And I'm going to do this algebraically if, uh, this time. So I know that my slope is two because my common difference is two. So I have tn is equal to two n plus c. Now n is going to start at zero. So this is effectively t0, t1, t2, t3. So when n is zero, tn is one. n is zero, tn is one. So c is equal to one. So the equation of the line that we get is going to be different this time. Last time we got c was minus 1. So tn is equal to uh, 2n plus 1. And what does that formula look like? Well, we know that it crosses the y-axis. The line crosses the y-axis at 1. And we know that it has a slope of 2. So if we rise by 2... 1, 2, we go across by 1, rise over run. So we know that the line is going to look something like that. And if we follow our pattern, we have t0 would be at 1, uh, t1 would be at 3, t1 would be at 3, t2 would be at or when n is 2, our pattern would be 5, and so on. So you can see that if, uh, if we take n as starting from 0, uh, then we get an equation that is basically identical to what we would get as the equation of a line if we weren't thinking about patterns.
we'd get y is equal to 2x plus 1, and that would be indistinguishable from what we would usually think of as the equation of a line. Uh, but we tend to think about patterns and our functions as slightly separate. Uh, and our purpose today is simply to highlight the fact that we can see them as very closely connected. Now, last thing I want to touch on is quadratics. There's a lot to do with quadratics, but for right now, all we're going to do is highlight the difference between them and linear patterns. So with linear patterns, the key defining characteristic is this common difference, this first difference, the difference between each term being the same. With a quadratic pattern, and this time I've just straight out told you what the, quadratic, what the quadratic pattern is. It's given by the uh, expression in x squared plus 3. So tn is equal to x squared plus 3. If we start at x is 0, we end up with 3, 4, 7, 12, and 19. Well, let's look at the relationship between each number here. Here we're adding on 1. Here we're adding on 3. Here we're adding on 5, and here we're adding on 7. So we're not adding on the same amount each time. The difference between each term is not constant. This instantly tells me this is not a linear pattern, because a linear pattern, I know, will have the same difference between each term. That's pretty much its defining characteristic. But if I keep going, if I was inclined to just be curious and see if there was a pattern between these numbers. What's happening here? Here I'm adding 2 to my first difference. I'm adding 2 to my first difference. I'm adding 2 to my first difference. So lo and behold, I still have a pattern. It's not as simple as the linear pattern, but it is still there. And the pattern is there is a common difference between the differences in the terms. So this is called the second difference. second difference. And for a quadratic equation, it's going to be constant. Now we're going to touch on uh, a related idea when we come to differentiation. I'm just going to mention this now. Differentiation is going to be about slopes and rates of change, uh, and it is going to link into this idea. So the fact that a quadratic has a constant first, uh, has a constant second difference, is going to be an idea that crops back up again in a form in differentiation when we're looking more closely at the slopes of lines and functions. But for right now, what we need is a linear pattern is defined as having a first difference, a difference between each of the terms of uh, that is constant, and a quadratic pattern uh, has a second difference that is constant. A difference of the differences is constant for a quadratic equation. Uh, and that is really all we need for now. We're going to touch on this in much more detail and really get into it later on, but for right now, that's what we need.